Hello, welcome to this DCS A10C2 tutorial. In this video, I will cover basic taxi takeoff and landing. So I'm picking right up where we left off on our very basic startup video. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to my uh, altitude um, indicator here, and I'm going to set the pressure to match um, the environment I can do that two ways. I can either go to my briefing, scroll all the way down to the weather information, and it will tell you the pressure in this case, 28.61 seen here, or you can do it another way by going to your map, going to your aircraft, and then just hovering over where your aircraft is. And you can see in the upper left, it tells me where my cursor is on my aircraft is 43 feet. So I can move this set pressure knob until the altimeter reads about 43 feet. All right, so this is 10, 20, or 20, 40, 60, 80, 1. So 20, 40, bring that down a little bit. And that about matches what's on the map. And that's 2865, which just so it happens to be pretty close to the 2861 that it shows here. If you want to be precise, you can use your weather report in your briefing, but this is generally close enough. But just to be proper, I'll put it to 2861. Alrighty. So now that that's done, I'll verify once again my flaps are in the maneuver position, set my takeoff trim for my loadout, and then you can press your nose wheel steering button. Nose wheel steering button. To toggle your nose wheel steering on if it's not already on. And you can see it's enabled here by steering engaged. If I press it, it turns it off. If I press it again, steering engaged comes on. I'm going to give some throttle, then I'll start moving. Now something very important to note is when you are heavily loaded, you need to do everything within your power to stay off the grass. If you come to a stop in the grass with a fully loaded aircraft, you're going to get stuck about 90% of the time. And also when you're taxiing around, your wings have a very large span, so make sure you give a wide berth to any vehicles that may be around you. You need to lower your seat or raise your seat. There is a seat height adjustment right here and you can put it up or down. I'll put it down a little bit. Just make sure that you can still read the bottom part of your HUD no matter what position you're sitting in. So if I'm sitting back a little bit like this I can just barely see the bottom of it so I know I'm good there. Generally, you're going to be very heavily loaded, so you'll need a long runway, so give yourself as much space as possible. And to prep for takeoff, we'll verify our flaps once again, takeoff trim, and now we'll come to these gauges down here. So these gauges all represent information having to do with your engines. You see there's two of each, so this is our left engine, right engine, temperature, 
left engine, right engine percent RPMs, left engine, right engine oil pressure, and so on. Left engine, right engine information. For takeoff, we're going to hold down our brakes, throw out my controls indicator, I'll hold down my brakes, and we're going to throttle up until our engine percentages stop increasing, and then I will release my brakes. And we're going to pay attention to two numbers. This one down here on the right that says 50, when that hits about 135, I'm going to pull up to 10 degrees. And on this right hand side, that is our altitude. So 135, pulling up to about 10 degrees up. And now that I'm up, I can put my gear up and move my flaps up. If you are heavily loaded for a combat mission, make sure that you um, make sure you have an established climb rate and you're getting some speed. Because if you put your gear up and your flaps up too quickly, you'll actually end up sinking um, because you need the extra lift from that maneuver flaps. And additionally, if you're very heavily loaded, you might pull up to about 5 degrees rather than 10, um, because it might take a little bit more speed to get you off the ground. Once you're up, you can go ahead and trim out. So I'm going to trim my nose down a little bit. And let's talk about some symbology. So, in our HUD, you can see this ladder. That represents our angle up or down, so we're 5 degrees up right now. There's the horizon, down there is 5 degrees down. This represents our velocity vector, which is showing where our plane is currently going. Down at the bottom, we have a compass heading, so I'm pointed about 083-ish. On the left, as I said, we have our speed in knots, and on the right, our altitude. The rest of this information we will cover during navigation tutorial. And then you'll see in our helmet that information is repeated. We have the speed, we have the altitude, the ladder for if we're looking up or down, and also a horizon line. Alright, I'll turn back in towards the airport and come in for a landing. So when I land, I'm going to line up this negative 5 on my HUD with the end of the runway. And when that is in line with the runway, I'm going to line up my velocity vector with the negative 5 and the end of the runway. And this will put me in a good position to come in for a nice easy landing. Right before I touch down, I'm going to move my velocity vector from the end of the runway to the opposite end of the runway. This will be a bit more clear um, when I demonstrate it coming in for the landing. Alright, there's the airfield out there. A lot of this information you see in the helmet or on the HUD, once again I'll cover in the navigation tutorial which will be in the video after this. But for now, this is just basic taxi takeoff and landing. So I'm going to try and line up this negative 5 with the end of the runway, and I'll bring my speed down. Generally, to land, we want to be about 135, 140 on a light load. And if you're still very heavy and you didn't use all of your munitions or fuel, you would end up uh, landing a little bit faster, just so you don't fall out of the sky. Since I have barely anything on this plane, I'll come in about 135, 140. Because this negative 5 is past the end of the runway, I'm going to push my plane down. And we can see, utilizing our helmet, the negative 5 up here. So I know when to pull up. I don't have to constantly be scrunching my head down to try and use the HUD. 
when I pull my head back up, my nose back up, I'm right in line there. And I'll bring my flaps down to the full position, and I'll put my gear down. And when you land, you're going to want to put your speed brake out for one and a half seconds. So I'll demonstrate that now. Your speed brake, if you hold it out for a one and a half count, one and, that's all you need. Any more than that, you'll kill your lift. You wait until you're actually on the ground to put it out. So I'll put it in and do that again. One end, and that's about all you need. All right, doing that got me off a little bit. So my negative five is below the end of the runway. To bring it up, I'm just gonna bring my nose, my velocity vector up, and then you'll see the negative five be pushed back towards the runway. All right, my speed's looking good, so I'm gonna try to hold it there. Negative five is on the end of the runway. So I'll go ahead and put my velocity vector on the negative five, and just hold it there or thereabouts to land, modulating my throttle to make sure I'm at the speed I want. Right before I hit the ground, I'm going to move my velocity vector from here to the opposite end of the runway and hold it there. Once I'm actually down, I will go ahead and pop out my speed brake and then hold my stick all the way back, in addition to pressing the brakes. Altitude, altitude. All right, I'm approaching the ground, so I'll pull my nose up to the opposite end of the runway, nice and smooth. Let my speed come down. All right, I've touched down, speed brake all the way up. Pull the stick back and hit my brakes. My nose wheel steering does not come on, so I'll put it on now with my nose wheel steering button. Generally, you'll want to do that below 70 or so. And now I'm completely stopped. I can put my speed brake in. And then move my flaps back to the maneuver position and taxi off to wherever I need to go. I'll do that one more time as a quick example. But it's pretty simple. You just keep the negative five in line with the end of the runway. When it's in line where you want to land, you'll put your velocity vector on that negative five. And then right before you touch the ground, you'll pull your velocity vector to the opposite end of the runway. Since I'm pretty light and I don't have any stores, as you saw earlier, you'll take off extremely quickly. But when you're heavily loaded, you might have to wait until you get, gain some more speed to take off. And this time, I'll only pull up to about 5 degrees, so you can see what it would look like with a heavily loaded aircraft. And I'll wait to put in my flaps and my gear to show you what that would look like. Alright, takeoff trim is set. Going to go ahead and throttle up. Wait till my engines spool. They've stopped spooling. The percent RPMs. I'll release my brakes. I'm going to turn off my nose wheel steering. That way it's a little easier to control with my rudders. All right, waiting for my speed to come up. At 135, I'll pull up to about five degrees and I'll just hold it there. And you see I'm already off. If I was heavily loaded, it would not have taken me up that quickly. Um, but just as an example, pull up to negative five if you, or to the positive five if you're heavily loaded. And then once you're at about 200 knots, you can bring your gear up. And then once your gear is completely up, you can move your flaps to the up position. Gear is up. 
now flaps are up. When you're heavily loaded, you don't want to be pulling up drastically. You want to be gaining some speed. Um, this is not a fast mover, but you'll get you there. All right, I'll fly out a little bit and then come back in for a lander. I'm going to trim out. From the takeoff trim, if I just let my stick come back to center, it's going to pitch me up drastically. So I've been holding my nose down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and trim out some. Alrighty, that's feeling good. And I'll come back in for another lander. Once again, just putting the negative 5 where I want to land on the runway, generally the end of it, and then putting my velocity vector on the negative 5 and holding it there until just before I touch the ground, and then I'll move my velocity vector to the opposite end. Alright, I'm going to bring my speed down because I'm lightly loaded to about 135, 140. If I was heavily loaded, I might land a little bit faster. Do a little bit of an S turn here to bleed off in speed, and I'll put out my speed brakes all the way to help bleed it off as well. If you put your speed brakes out all the way, just remember to put them in and only put them out for a one and a half count before you actually land. All right, the negative five is looking good at the end of the runway. I'll put my velocity vector there. Put my speed brake in. Gear and flaps down. And if you want, you can utilize your mirrors as well to look at your speed brake position. So if I'll do the one and a half count, one and, you'll see them come out just a little bit. All right, speed's looking about good, so I'll start trying to hold it here. Remember, if your negative 5 drops below you where you want it, just bring your velocity vector up a little bit, and that'll push it further out. Alright, I like where that's looking. I'll bring my velocity vector in line with it. watching my speed. Altitude, altitude. All right, so I'm getting close to touching down, so I'll start bringing my nose or my velocity vector to the opposite end of the runway in just a second. All right, I'll start bringing it to the opposite end. Nice and easy. And then I'll just hold it there. Butter smooth every time. I'm down, speed brake out. I'll hit my brakes and pull my stick back to my gut to help give me some extra drag. All right, and on my nose wheel steering, so it's a little easier to control. And I'll put my speed brake in, lapse maneuver, and taxi on over to wherever I need to go. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching.